ladies and gentlemen, we now present George Edwards in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Well, this is a surprise, Margaret, dear. I didn't think we'd be seeing you before midday. It's such a lovely morning, and I don't feel the least bit tired. I'm surprised to hear that. You never stopped dancing from the time you got there till we left at three o'clock. No need to ask if you enjoyed yourself, then. None at all. It was marvellous. Just marvellous. Uh, had breakfast, my dear? Yes, thanks. Carrie brought me up some quite a while ago. I, I think I'll go out and get a little of this morning sunshine, if you don't mind. Yes, do, dear. You may not feel tired, but you could do with a little more color in your cheek. Aunt Marion, here are your pearls. Thank you so much for letting me wear them. They look beautiful. But, Margaret, dear, I meant you to keep them. Didn't you understand? You said if you had a daughter, they would have been hers. I... I'm not your daughter. And I never will be. Never. Well... What does it mean, Edward? Why did she say that? I, uh, I don't know exactly. Something happened at the ball last night? Oh, nothing in particular. Edward, you're keeping something back from me. I can tell by the way you speak. Now, what is it? Well, it's, uh, just that Henry paid rather a lot of attention to a, a Mrs. Marchbanks last night, and I suppose Margaret's upset by it. Mrs. Marchbanks? Not the Mrs. Marchbanks. I think there is only one. But... What was she doing there? How did she come to be at the Hunt Ball? I understand that she moves in the very best society, my dear. She's staying with the Marchioness of Ralph at present. Don't forget that she has met with the approval of a very distinguished personage indeed. Forget it. How could I when it's common gossip in two continents? But does that mean that decent people have got to recognize a woman who makes an open fool of... Hush, my dear. These things are far better left unsaid. She only concerns us because she's been the cause of making trouble between Margaret and Henry. Did she take much notice of him? Quite a bit. But, but why? Henry's only a boy. What can a woman like that see in him? Oh, he's handsome and young. These women like to try their wiles on young men sometimes. I'd like to try my wiles on her. Edward, if anything really comes between Henry and Margaret, it'll break my heart. They're made for each other. Well, we'd best leave these matters to them. Ah, oh, there goes Henry across the terrace now. He's following her along Rose Walk. I think our little Margaret will be wearing those pearls after all, my dear. Come, pour me out another cup of coffee and we'll go into the morning room. It's beautifully sunny there. such a hurry. For a walk? Uh, mind if I come? I can't stop you. Oh, yes, you can. By telling me you don't want me. Are you going to? I'm going as far as the stables, really. I want to tell one of the grooms to have Clytie ready for me at 11. Oh, going riding, are you? Who with? John. Margaret, look at me. Why? I want to tell you... I want to tell you how terribly sorry I am. Oh, Margaret, I'm a brute. I deserve to have you hate me. I don't hate you, Henry. What then? I don't know. I was angry last night, terribly angry. And now I just feel numb and dead. Oh, Henry, why did you do it? Oh, why ask me? I was standing at the foot of the stairs, waiting for you, eager for you to come, and suddenly somebody came along and said that Mrs. Marchbanks had asked who I was and wanted to meet me. Well, I couldn't refuse. And then, well, then we started talking together and it seemed as though she'd forgotten that there was anybody else in the room. I don't think I even asked her to dance, but somehow she seemed to be in my arms and, well, we were out on the middle of the floor. 
Well, I can't explain it any better than that, I'm afraid. And did that mean that you had to dance with her over and over again so that everybody was talking about you? Well, I would never have done it if you hadn't given all my dances to John. Well, I'm glad I did. I enjoyed dancing with John. I like him. I think he's nice, ever so much nicer than you. Oh, I'm perfectly sure you're right, but you don't love him and you never will. What makes you so sure? He asked me to marry him. And I didn't say no. You didn't say yes either, did you? I said I'd tell him this morning. When you go out riding? Yes. Margaret, you know what you've got to tell him, don't you? Oh, it isn't any use, Margaret. You'll never make yourself feel any better this way. And it isn't fair to John either. What do you mean? You're right when you say John's nice. He is. Too nice to be hurt so badly. You've got to tell him the truth and let him go. And what is the truth? That you'd hardly have given him a single dance if it hadn't been that I'd behaved so badly to you. You know that. And you know that there's no one else but me. Oh, you're so certain of me. I hate you for it. Do you think that you can do anything to me and get away with it? Margaret, do you remember what you said to me last night just before you went upstairs to dress after we'd come home from the hunt? You said, in spite of the gallows, in spite of everything... There may be nothing in what that crazy old woman in the tumble-down barn told us, but you must go on feeling that way about me, Margaret. You don't know how desperately I need you. You're everything that's best and worthwhile in life to me. Don't take yourself away and leave the Mrs. Marchbanks instead. Henry, if I only understood you better. But there's something so strange and wild about you. At times you seem so, so old, as though you'd lived for a thousand years. Well, don't try to understand me. Just love me, Margaret. Love me forever. No matter what happens, no matter what I do. Otherwise, I'm lost. I know I am. I do love you. If you only knew how much. And you'll marry me? As soon as I'm through my course, you'll, you'll marry me? Yes. Yes, I will. Oh, I'm going to do such splendid things, dearest. I'm going to heal people and make them well. I'm going to get little children who are deformed and delicate and help to make them strong. I'm going to find new drugs and medicines to take away pain. I'm going to find a way to reach the tortured souls of men and women and give them peace. Now you've got that look on your face that I love so much. Now I know why I love you. Why I'd follow you wherever you go. Oh, if only you knew. I only know I love you. And always will. Forever and forever. May I come in, Mr. Rutherford? Yes, Henry, my boy, come in. When did you reach London? I came up last night, sir. Have you seen Margaret? Not yet. I thought I'd have a word with you first. Well, sit down and tell me what it is I can do for you. I want you to give your consent to Margaret and me announcing our engagement at her birthday party next week. You, uh, you knew, of course, that we had the sort of understanding, didn't you? Yes, I knew very well. As a matter of fact, Margaret told me about it after she came back from staying at your parents' place some months ago. I trust you haven't any objections, sir. You're the son of my oldest and closest friend, Henry. And that makes what I have to say all the more painful. Why, what do you mean? Surely... I'll be frank with you. A marriage between my daughter and you, Henry, has been one of my dearest wishes. And I know it's been the same with your mother and father. Then uh, let me finish, please. Margaret is my whole life. Her happiness and her welfare matter more to me than anything else in this world. Yes, but surely you know that I feel that I should be perfectly content to trust them both to you. I can't tell you how much I wish it were so. Why, what do you mean? What have you got against me? The man I give my daughter to must be able to keep faith with her. He must have a moral standing, at least to match hers. I don't say equal to hers, because no man can be on the same plane as a really good, pure woman. Oh, I wish you'd explain. What have you got against me? What are you talking about? A certain Mrs. Marchbanks. Now, don't think I've been spying on you, 
But by the merest accident, actually through my legal business, I happened to discover your relations with her. What? There was a certain settlement about to be made. It was cancelled. And the reason was you. You can't blame me for feeling reluctant about giving Margaret into your keeping, can you? Oh, I know I'm unworthy. I, I know I'm unfit to touch her, but the thought of losing, why, you don't know what it means. Did you think of that when you were paying your surreptitious visits to that woman? Oh, won't you give me a chance to redeem myself? We're not asking to be married yet. I won't be through my course for another year. I swear that if you'll say nothing to Margaret, you'll never have cause to complain of me again. I'll say nothing to her. But I can't consent to the engagement being made public. But what am I going to tell her? I don't know. But I imagine that you're pretty practiced in the art of concealment, aren't you? I deserve that. But it hurts for all that. Henry, why did you do it? For the life of me, I can't imagine how you could have stooped to, to such a thing. And so soon after Margaret promised to marry you. Surely your love for her should have made it easy to resist the temptations that this other woman offered. Couldn't it have been that it was because I love her so much? Do you think that the feelings I have for Margaret have nothing to do with the flesh? She's remote beyond me. Everything places her beyond my reach. Oh, can't you be reasonable? Perhaps I can. Yes, perhaps I can. I'm not so far removed from my own youth that I've forgotten. Then you'll not be hard on me. You'll see that what I felt for this woman had nothing whatever to do with Margaret. It's just as though I was another being, a different man. Yet still the man who wants to marry my daughter. And the man who might well break her heart and ruin her life. Oh, give me a chance. Just give me a chance. Come back to me at the end of two years when you've taken your degree and established yourself as a doctor. If there's been no more of it, well, there'll be no more. I swear there'll be no more. Who's there? Lanyon, what on earth are you doing? It's tucked away at the bar at the of night. Go away, you idiot. I'm working. Your supper's getting cold. I make cuckoo, too. Well, drink it yourself. I don't want any. You know what the time is? Yes, it's a quarter past twelve. Go to bed and sleep your brains away. I'm going to stay here till I've got something to go right. Men up in hospital then get some sleep. Oh, you'll end up in one if you don't shut up and go away. You've made me forget my calculations. I'll have to do them all over again. Oh, all right, all right, you budding geniuses. Give me a pain. Professor Marriott, my beloved master. I've been a coward. I failed to keep my word. I haven't discovered the secret, but I'm going to. I've got to. I can't have this infernal, evil second self destroying me. And it is destroying me. It's growing stronger, harder to resist. Come now, here are my notes. Here is the tincture. Here are the salts. I'll start again. <laughs> 